Hello, and welcome to this problem-solving video on standing waves and harmonics, and in particular, applying it to this idea of trying to set them up on a ring. Okay, so in lectures, you do a lot with tubes and things, but we're going to instead look at setting it up on a ring. Now, the immediate question that jumps right at us is what is the wavelength of the fundamental on this ring? In order to understand that, we need to figure out, essentially, um, first off, what the fundamental means, and how does that mean something about the wavelength. But also, we need to just think really quickly about what's going on with a ring. So, if I'm going to come over here, and I'll actually I'll draw it over here, I'll do a ring. And so, inside this ring, say, I want to set up a standing wave. In order for it to be a standing wave, I need to come back and do exactly what I was doing. So if I think about an oscillation that starts in the center, and I'm going to put a little mark here that I want to get back to the center, then what I can do is I can move away from the center as I go around this ring, go out to the edge and come back towards the center, and I can go towards the inner edge and back towards the center. Okay, so that would be a standing wave, because it closes what it's doing. At this point, it wants to keep moving further out, which is exactly what it does. It moves back through the center, in, through the center, out, and so that closes nicely. So that would be a standing wave in this ring. Now I can do another one. Okay, if I just double up on my reference points, so I can go out, and through the center, in, through the center, out, through the center, in, through the center. Okay, so that would be a standing wave too. And, right, if I take this to the extreme and I draw lots and lots of reference points of going through the center, then what I really mean is I'm drawing things that look like this, but they're really stretched out. So they are doing this kind of motion, well, just because I've only had a few points to consider, um, they didn't quite look like that. They look like weird egg shapes inside this ring. But that's exactly the sort of motion that they're doing. They're just oscillating in a sinusoidal way about a line that's just drawn through the center of this ring. Okay. So that is what my standing wave is doing. And there's just one very special condition which is that they had to close. Uh, if I was going to come from inside, going towards the outside, then I needed to be moving towards the outside as I moved around. If I tried to do this without it closing, per se, so if I have this ring here, and I was going to do this kind of motion, but then I just wanted to end it like that, and just kind of cross these two together, that's no good. Okay, that's not going to be a standing wave, because this one will continue, and then do this kind of thing, and then I'll just keep going around, drawing in a new position each time. And so that's not a standing wave, because as you see, there's no point that is always a node. Whereas these ones, the nodes are fixed. Okay, those guys are always nodes, the anti-nodes are always anti-nodes. As I loop around, I move exactly along the same path. So those are standing waves, this one is not. Okay, so then we need to think about this. For our harmonics, the defining equation for a harmonic is that there's some fundamental harmonic, which we call the first harmonic. And every other harmonic is just some multiple of that harmonic, some integer multiple n. Okay, so the fundamental is this frequency that starts off this multiplicative scheme, which means, looking at this equation, since I'm always multiplying by an integer, so n is 1, 2, 3, blah, 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 then the fundamental, this first harmonic, is the lowest frequency. So I want the lowest frequency standing wave, and I want to know its wavelength. Okay, but if I want to talk about wavelength, well, then let's think about that. So, what do we know? We know that the speed of a wave 
is the frequency times the wavelength, which means the wavelength is the speed divided by frequency. So if I'm taking the lowest frequency, then that's the longest wavelength. Okay, so I want the longest wavelength in order to get this fundamental wavelength that I'm going to be working with. I'll just cross my H. All right. So I want the longest wavelength in order to get the fundamental. So now, thinking back to these diagrams, what is the longest wavelength that I could draw that makes a standing wave? So it was this sine wave kind of thing, oscillating about the center of the circle, and it had to come back to where it started. Okay, and it had to be doing it in the same way. So let's take a quick look and just verify that one last choice is not quite right. So you might think, all right, I'm going to draw my ring. I'm drawing my guiding center line. It would help if my ring was a bit more concentric, but I think we get the idea. So you might think, all right, I'll start there, and then what I'll do is I'll approach outward, I'll end up touching the outside, and approach inward, and go there, and that looks kind of like it's closed. Except that when you get here, you want to go inward still. All right, because you came from the outside, you cross back through zero, you want to go inside. So this one wants to cross inside and then cross back outside, and then it would loop back over. So I haven't closed this one. Okay, so the one that closes is actually the one that goes out and back in, so it's the one that I drew first. Goes out, back in, and then back to the starting point. Okay, so it was the original yellow one, which you cannot see so well there. Let's draw a circle. I'll try to do this somewhat clearly. I'll draw a nice circle. Okay. Start there, have a reference. So here you want to go out, touch the edge, come back in, go back in, touch the edge, and out. And that one has properly looped because as I'm crossing, I want to go further out, which is exactly what I do. So that's the closed one. And that means that its wavelength is exactly, because I fit one whole wavelength in there, its wavelength is simply the wavelength of, um, I mean, it's simply the circumference of the circle, the total path that it can travel. Because it took one complete uh, loop around the circle in order to get this back to where it started from. So lambda fundamental is equal to 2 pi r. Okay, and that means that for a radius of a half, lambda 1 is just pi meters. So a half meter radius times 2 gives a factor of 1 meter times pi. So lambda for the fundamental is pi meters. All right. So now let's keep on moving with this. So then we want to know what the wavelength of the third harmonic is. Now, again, we've got the defining equation in terms of frequency. And I already erased it. I shouldn't have. We knew that lambda was equal to v on f. Okay. So if we want to know what lambda n is in terms of lambda 1, well, lambda n is v on fn. Fn is n times f1. So that's 1 on n times v on f1, which is lambda 1. So then this thing goes in for that. And so we know that lambda n in the end is just lambda 1 divided by n. Okay. So lambda 3, pi on 3, 
and meters for our unit. Okay, so that's all there is um, to understanding this problem. It's a simple reworking of the frequency in terms of wavelengths. And the real exciting part is understanding how to draw these kind of pictures and realize that the wave has to close. What does that imply for the wavelength?